Hey, what's up, Zach here? And I'm about to spend 120 hours straight in the Nike Mac Attack, taking them halfway across the world in a review that's a lot different than the ones you're used to seeing on this channel. Because as I recently found out, I've got a subscriber and fan in Istanbul, Turkey, who also happens to be one of the world leaders in microsurgical hair restoration. And because I'm not quite ready to let go of my hair, I thought this would be a great time to showcase kind of what more of these retro sneakers would feel like being in planes, trains, automobiles over the course of 120 hours, especially since I'm gonna be doing a lot of collab videos with Hair Neva, which is the clinic I'm gonna be going to check out. Also be showcasing how these do walking around an entire city in just the dead of summer and seeing how they do on foot for that long of a period of time, as well as to be able to get my hair back, which is gonna be just awesome. So we are about to board a plane here to uh, Chicago, then London, and then finally Istanbul. And I'll be showcasing the features and performance of the Mac attacks along the way. Let's get on this plane. Here we go. Now, if you're a tennis player watching this video, you know that at least at Wimbledon every year, some player is getting into trouble for having too much color, whether it be their tops, bottoms, shoes, socks, whatever. And, and that's still going on today in the 2020s. And that's what makes the uppers of the Mac attack to me so interesting because back in the 84, 85 season when, the, when these were coming out, there was even more regulation on shoes. Remember, they had to be all white, just like pretty much every other part of your clothing. And so back in the early 80s, when these came out in gray and in black, especially with the checkerboard and the tongue which was you know really you know heinous back then this was really kind of a rebellious type colorway to put in the uppers even though nowadays we kind of think of it as more um, muted or more subtle i mean still made of action leather which is just real leather with a polyurethane coating now that was especially for a tennis player that's good because number one you can make the leather a little bit thinner so it's lighter but also it's going to withstand a little bit of dragging and sliding on a hard court and not the dragging and sliding we see right now with you know baseline grinding with someone like Carlos Alcaraz sliding right just getting all that eversion whereas in John McEnroe's day it was basically dragging on the very tips of his toes trying to get down for a low volley or a half volley or something like that or a pickup volley not necessarily we're pushing technology but we're at least using what was available at the time to make it really a, a tennis specific model even though when you look at it it does look a lot like you know some of the earlier cup sold basketball shoes and it may not look like it but the textile stick right here right where the metatarsals will bend number one that's going to help the shoe bend more because like i said when we get into the midsole we'll talk about that once we get to chicago however it also allows a lot more breathing right where your foot is going to need it the most right like right in the forefoot where you're going to be producing all that friction on the ground where your foot's going to be contacting the ground because remember in these more old school setup shoes in the forefoot of these things number one the shoe doesn't bend all that much and the stack is so low down there so you really need something there to kind of dissipate all that friction heat versus some newer shoes now where your foot sits up higher off the ground in the forefoot and you don't produce all that trauma and heat. All right, and with my first ever airport shoe upper review in the books, it is time to hop on over to Chicago and hopefully get to do a little bit of plane spotting. Now, before I get into the midsole, I do want to make mention that's a 747 behind me and there's not many of these left here. So I guess you might be seeing one of the last ones in like service on this channel, which is weird because it's a sneaker channel. But anyway, getting into the midsole of the Mac attacks, I'm not gonna cut these ones open because it's just a rubber cup sole. If you've seen one rubber sole, you've seen them all. And, and honestly, the Mac attacks really aren't meant or they're not known for their tech. They're known more for just being one of the first of its kind. Now, if you look at the bounce height test of the Mac attack, that rubber cup sole, it's still not too bad while the shoe is new. It's just as the shoe starts to wear down, remember, it's gonna start to feel a little bit stiffer, more unforgiving. That rubber just is gonna get a little bit more dampened over time the rubber cup sole at first they do feel like they give you a little bit of a spring because that's actually what's happening that rubber is actually bending and snapping it's just over the lifetime of the shoe and if you're playing you know tennis in them like John McEnroe was playing in them it's not going to be too long before that rubber becomes a little bit stiffer a little bit more dead underfoot so it's why we go to more materials like TPUs and EVAs now they have a lot more forgiveness and over time they can sometimes even perform better than initially versus on a rubber cup sole which you've seen what those do over time. All right, with that, it is time to fly through the night to London and then a quick turnaround to Istanbul. And yes, 
guess the Mac attacks are the only shoes I brought for this trip. We'll see how this goes. All right, I am here in Istanbul. I actually met a subscriber here just a little bit ago, which was crazy, it got recognized. And now on my first day here, uh, my new friends that work at the hair clinic are taking me to the Grand Bazaar, which is the oldest market in the world. And wow, it is just incredible from all the teas, spices, coffees, the Turkish delight. It is just a sensory overload. Uh, just what a fun place to sample like everything Turkey is known for in one huge place. And, and just for some context, Right now it's 93 degrees Fahrenheit currently and the Mac attacks still do not feel like they are heating up at all. So that is a great sign for this trip so far. Um, I also got to check out all these replica sneaker dealers, some of whom had really great sneakers back there. I, it, what I was told was is that usually there's a wall of sneakers that's the first replica, which means it's the exact same shoe and materials, but just not assembled in the company's factory, right? And then the second wall were the ones that were literal recreations using different materials and like less quality control. So it's just, just not as high quality of a shoe. But speaking of those sneakers, let's look at the Mac Attacks outsole while I grab some food here on the Golden Horn. All right, so getting into the outsole tread of the Mac Attack, yeah, that's the Golden Horn behind me. I'm finally in Turkey. Um, was gonna do a lot more of this in the airport as well as in London, but it was just getting to be a really, really long travel day. So this is a much better scene anyway. But anyway, getting into the outsole tread here. Now this is what's considered a block and nub pattern. Now it's got this star pattern on the outside for a little more grip. But what's interesting is, is on the Mac attacks, remember the outsole tread is based upon an old school grass nub system. So you can see there's the nubs, but then in between are the blocks. And that's what was kind of previously thought would get more traction on an outdoor hard court uh, while also maintaining traction on something like clay or grass. However, as we know now, you really want a little more spaces between between the nubs. However, if you notice on the periphery of the shoe, these star patterns, that really is gonna give you a little more grip into a more slick outdoor court, like a more slick outdoor hard court. The problem with that is, is that once the, the tread starts going, you're not gonna get any traction from it at all. So it's gonna go from elite to pretty slippery pretty quick. Um, I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grade sandpaper, you can see the burr just washes it right off. So, um, it, while it's really good initially, if you're someone like John McEnroe who can get multiple pairs of these over and over again, it's great. However, if you are gonna be using these in any longer term capacity and putting any bit of heat into them, get ready for that star pattern to start kind of going down. However, just for walking around and kicking around here and there, they should be just fine. All right, well, it is the big day. Uh, why I've been wearing these uh, shoes around the world, uh, just get a hair transplant. Um, I've had more thinning than I would have liked to admit, but once uh, they start drawing the lines on my head, it is pretty obvious uh, how much I am thinning. Uh, I'm going to have two sessions, uh, one today and tomorrow, just because I don't have any one patch that's going really bald. It's just kind of thinning overall. They're starting with a numbing around my head, which is really the only pain painful part and really it only gets painful when they go around the ears uh, with the anesthetic otherwise I really am not uh, feeling it. Now once uh, they're satisfied uh, that I'm numb uh, they begin extracting grafts and, and apparently they're trying to get 3,000 grafts per day on me which just it just sounds nuts at least to me. Uh, it, it sounds like a shaver uh, but what it's doing is it's just extracting the follicles uh, this goes on for a few hours while they harvest around the back of my head and then um, I have lunch, which is really good. Uh, and after lunch, uh, you flip over and they take those grafts and begin actually plugging them in or grafting them and uh, with what they call a choy pen and that impales the follicle into wherever thinning area they draw out. Once again though, I'm feeling absolutely none of this, kind of just sitting here resting, I fell asleep a couple times and then all of a sudden they tell you, done. And after another few hours of grafting, it's time to go back to my hotel room and just rest. I'm going to grab a quick bite just at the bodega downstairs tonight because I am absolutely exhausted. All right, so it is day one after my first procedure. I still have a little bit to go up here, uh, but I figured that I would do the fit of these while I'm just sitting around here in the hotel. But, uh, you know, with the Mac attacks, they're a lot like other, you know, more retro Nike shoes. They fit a little bit boxier. They break in a little bit better because the materials are just a little bit better. Narrow, medium foot, go true to size 2E. I mean, I just went true to size and I was fine, but since they are more casual, I think you can go up a half size if you want to for more roomy fit. 4E, you can go up a half to one size and you're just fine. In terms of the snake bitten foot, I mean, I've been wearing these shoes a lot, been touring around in them a lot. Um, 
They need an orthotic, you know, for, for pretty extended wear. If it's me, I'm put, at least putting in some sort of orthotic just to make them a little bit more forgiving. So you don't need anything crazy in there. But I would just say, if you want to wear them for the extended time like I am, I would be augmenting. Well, it's day two and the procedure is roughly the same, except that later in the day, I'm actually taken back at night to wash my hair and place a new dressing on. This feels really weird because number one, they give you a lot of local anesthetic, but also because of the swelling, because they're impaling all those follicles in there, that creates further numbness. So it all just feels like, honestly, like a hard pile carpet on top of my head. That, that's all I can really feel. Um, they use the DHI method on me, which is more time consuming for the surgeon to do, but it also gives a much more natural look, but it also heals a lot quicker. That way I'm able to get on an airplane here in just a few hours. All right, so my travel day was a little insane. So I'm gonna narrate this one from the future. <laughs> I got to uh, Istanbul airport at least three and a half hours early. I made sure I got there early and I just got onto my plane as it was boarding. My one friend uh, who had been to Istanbul recently had warned me that uh, there were up to seven checkpoints uh, between you and when you get there and the airplane and I ended up hitting every single one. The second flight uh, in London when I landed, that, that second connection to Chicago, kept changing gates in London so I had zero time to do anything at that airport. I wanted to get some food, uh, you know, maybe take the bandages off at that point, but I just couldn't. Um, I ended up getting my plane and then when I got to Chicago, the flight was fine, uh, but when I got to Chicago, I only had an hour and about 15 minutes to clear customs and get back across security. Uh, which actually ended up not being terrible because I have global entry and TSA pre-check. I ended up being all the way on the other side of the terminal for my gate for whatever reason they told me to go there. So I really had to hustle to my last flight. I ended up having time except for I lost all of it in the process of going back through. I didn't have pre-check because there was no pre-check lane in the place they made me go. Um, so I really had to hustle back to that flight. But you know, after a whole day, it was uh, maybe uh, ended up being about 21 hours of flying. Um, I was just exhausted. However, when I got to the airport, my wife and kids surprised me. They had a big poster for me waiting. So that was kind of really gave me a little more energy just kind of seeing them and being at the airport with them. It was just really, really nice. It was a really great end of the trip. And you know, now that I'm back where I started only just <laughs> a few levels down, I guess, I, I gotta say the Mac attacks for wearing them for that extended period of a time and that much walking and frankly running I was doing through the airports, you know, they really, held up very well. They were not terrible to travel in. A running shoe is obviously going to be a lot better if you're trying to run from plane to plane or terminal to terminal. However, you know, for what these are, a retro 80s tennis sneaker, they did hold up remarkably well, especially not giving me any, you know, back pain, foot pain, any fatigue. I would say, you know, if you're going to play tennis or pickleball in them, I wouldn't be going too, too hard, especially in today's modern game. These more meant for serving and volleying or going more north to south or running from gate to gate, I should say. Uh, but you know, like I said, in terms of a travel sneaker, something you want to wear that's a retro, they really did hold up great. And speaking of things that were also a great experience, I do want to thank Hair Neva for just the unbelievable experience I had in Istanbul, not only as a patient, but I guess as a medical tourist. I mean, just the cultural experience I had there was just phenomenal. You know, once I got off the plane, you know, the car picked me up and then, you know, they kind of met me there. We went and took a tour of Istanbul, but I got to try some of the best food I have ever had in my life. I am sorry, Situ, my grandmother, uh, but some of the food there was just unreal. Even the rice, that's usually what she's known for. Uh, but even there, it was just on another level. And they just kept passing me plate after plate. Just getting to try just all these like really authentic dishes there was great. Uh, getting just a shop around, seeing all the, the sights in Istanbul was just fantastic. And then just being really made to feel at home when I was there, getting the procedure done. Uh, and the one thing I really appreciated was, is coming from a, a physician, you know, myself who does surgery, you know, just the meticulousness of the physicians there, the surgeons there when they're doing this procedure, uh, I really appreciated because, you know, you want to be able to keep your hairline. You don't want to look like you had a hair transplant done and there, you know, it really is kind of half science and half artistry there. And they really have the artistry part down pat um, because they use a little bit of a less invasive procedure. Um, my recovery process, you know, the three, four days afterwards really was not much. I had swelling which came down about the fourth day. My head was pretty swollen. And then after that, it's fine. As you can see me now, I pretty much don't look all that much different. And that's because all the hair has 
fallen out, right? The, the hair falls out after a couple weeks uh, and then it grows back over the course of months. So you look like you have really full hair for a little bit and then it kind of comes back to pre-levels and then grows back. So I'll be doing a six month and a year follow-up. Uh, but I, I gotta say, I just cannot recommend their clinic enough. Obviously I checked it out before I went there, but you know, you're, you're still a little nervous flying halfway across the world to get a hair transplant done, but they really did make me feel at home and the experience was just one that I truly will never forget. So thank you again for sending me out there to do this. I just, uh, it was a lot of fun. Number one, getting to wear the Mac attacks for a few days in a row, as well as uh, getting something that hopefully uh, will uh, stick with me for the rest of my life. And thank you for watching this. I usually don't do vlogs. This is kind of something new. So if you want to see more of these type of videos, maybe travel videos with shoes, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check out Hair Neva, I will leave a link to that down below as well as the Mac attacks down below. So I will see you uh, if you're watching this for the, the hair transplant uh, transformation videos. I'll see you in six months. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Respect to rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.